my pleasure to introduce Melson Delacroix. And he poses the question whether there's an algorithm for proving minimality of surface foliation. Thank you. Uh, so I'm hopeful about the answer, but uh, as you will see, there is a lot of big troubles coming in when you want to answer it. Uh, so let me first start with a problem that is mostly of number theoretic flavor, but that you would have to solve in order to solve the simpler problem of understanding minimality of surface foliation. So the problem is as follows. You look at this triangle inside the projective plane, uh, uh, yes, projective plane. Uh, and this is the point 1, 0, 0. So this is just the standard simplex. It's 0, 1, 0. <coughs> or B to R, whatever you want to call it. So this is the standard simplex. Or you can think of the triangle inside the affine space. And uh, you play the following game. You remove the middle triangle. And you consider the affine, uh, projective map, or affine actually in this case, that just map the white triangles into the big ones. So you have three maps. Uh, A, which is 1, 1, 1. 0, 0, 1. And these maps just map this triangle A to the world uh, initial triangle. And so you can cook up B and C uh, similar uh, here and there. Right? Uh, and they are the same, just one of the rows is all made of ones, and the rest is just like if it was identity matrix. And there is a unique compact, non empty. K. Uh, so that K is uh, uh, A. A is a contraction. Of A map the sorry the big simplex to the small one. So it's a contraction in the. It's a contraction, and uh, so you have a unique cantor uh, uh, cantor set like this. And what is it? Uh, you just look at this, each of the region, and you just start removing the, the triangle that's in there. So you have to be careful. It's not like the Sierpinski uh, carpet. The Sierpinski carpet, you would have to remove the middle triangle here. But this is not what you are doing here. What you are doing here is to remove the third. Uh, so this is a half. And then you remove the triangle that is at a third. Uh, so we're doing right, yes. And then at a fourth, and then at a fifth. So topologically, it's the same as a Sierpinski triangle, but uh, for number theoretic purposes, it is not. And this is important for the question I'm asking. The question, or open problem, or as you wish. So what I'm interested in are the points in this K intersected with the rationals. So P2 of Q bar. So Q bar is the algebraic closure of the So you might so it's easy to build points in this set. Because anytime you pick a product of A B C, the, uh, for example, if I pick the matrix M which is A B square C A B, I pick the dominant, so it is a positive matrix, that's the dominant eigenvector. So uh, mv equal lambda v for a lambda positive, and v is a unique up to scalar. So it is Perron Comenius theorem. That's two scalar. And so v defines a point somewhere. So let's say it's a v bar inside this. And this point has algebraic entries. So each time you pick such a matrix, you have a point in there. And the question is whether this is the only way you can build uh, the, the points that are here. So the question is, hmm, uh, do necessary uh, points from uh, Problems. 
uh, construction. And the whole police construction just means this. Uh, you have to be a bit careful because uh, actually there is a, an underlying dynamic in this. So let me phrase it in more, a bit more precise in the question. Uh, you have a dynamic on K. Let me call it F. So if you have a point P, you can just map it to A minus 1 P. Uh, if P is in A delta and B minus 1 P, etc. And that's why you get a dynamical system in there. So you can think of it as a continued fraction expansion on K. So it's a continued fraction expansion like. Sort of. The matrix M is just a matrix. This is, a, this is an example. It is an example to say that this is not empty. Yeah. You have a lot of points in there. You have this gives you many points in there. Of uh, how uh, uh, and the degree is always uh, cubic, right? Because it's a two by two matrix. So, but it might not always be a positive matrix. Uh, there is no inverse. There is no inverse. So you have a dynamic, and the, so this, this is a more precise way of stating the question. If you have a point like this, when you apply F, if you start from V applying F, what you will see is a point of period 3, 4, 5, 6, which is the number of matrix you use. And so the question, uh, the question is whether uh, such point is necessarily ultimately periodic under F. K in the picture is the complement of all these triangles that you need to remove. So it's very much like the triadic intersect. The tri so if you find it too hard, you can start with the same question with the triadic intersect. So you remove this part and you start again. So it's C. And the <coughs> question is whether. So this, I, I think this question is at least known to first and third <coughs> looking at these kind of questions. Uh, whether C intersected with the uh, algebra only consists of rational points. <coughs> so in flavor, this is the same kind of thing, but when you look at minimality of foliations, you end up with... <coughs> this is a particular case of... <coughs> uh, explain uh, for the book. This is an open question too. This is an open question too. Question two. <coughs> oh, so this is the usual cancer set. This one is the usual cancer set. Yes, usual. <coughs> Try it. But nobody knows whether it contains some non trivial algebraic points. And nobody believes. But the, the belief answer is that it is equal. So this is why I wrote it this way. And I believe the answer to this question is also uh, that the answer is yes. Conjecturally, yes, I would say. And also for the regular continued fractions, this is also open, right? That if you have a number with bounded continued fraction but expansion. Bounded, but here it's ultimately <coughs> periodic, so for continued fraction it's no. If it's ultimately periodic, it's standard continued fraction, then the number is quadratic, right? Sure, sure. Yeah. But, but there is a related open question. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. If you have a bounded expansion, then it is not algebraic. If it's either algebraic or quadratic. Yeah, 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 true. Yeah, it's also the same kind of question. All right, so now let's go to the geometric part of the talk. Uh, I will define what is a foliation on the surface, and I will define what I mean by minimality of the foliation. And then I will uh, explain a partial algorithm that answers in a lot, lot of cases, and uh, why this comes as a boring case. I think in the, in the abstract I wrote the evil sub-zero case, so this is one of the ideal sub-zero cases. Uh, that will be at the end of the talk. Uh, so let's go with the uh, foliation. And uh, actually, one convenient way of working with the uh, foliation is to use interval exchange transformations. 
I will try to always make it clear how to translate. But if you want to put in a computer, the interval exchange transformation way is mm, more appropriate. Uh, so what is the interval exchange transformation first? So IET for short. Uh, IET you are given, so this will be a definition by example. Uh, you are given two permutations, <laughs> actually two orderings, uh, numbers, and uh, you are giving some length. So these are in R plus. And given this data of length and these orderings, you build a map from uh, a certain interval to a certain interval. So you cut the top interval according to these numbers in the order given by the top row. So the top row is called P top, and the bottom row is called P bottom. So you, this is A, B, C, D. So you start with A and then D and then C and then D. So this is lambda A, lambda B, lambda C. I'm sorry, lambda C. And lambda. Yeah, my writing is perhaps. Is very small. Let me start again the picture. And make it big. So you start with lambda A, and then B, and then let's say C like this, no, C like this, and then D. So these are the lengths. And then you do the same for the bottom row according to the ordering on the second row. So I'm starting with the lengths here. Lambda D. and then C, and then B, and then A. <coughs> so, the so let me label the intervals by the letters, and the lambda are the, the lengths, right? So this is C and this is D. <coughs> uh, and now that I have uh, defined uh, this two partitions of the interval, I can define a map which just consists of uh, taking the sub-interval that I la labeled A and map it by translation on the interval in the bottom side. So this is my transformation in T. Defined by the data phi and lambda. And just to make it clear, the interval B is just mapped here by another translation. Uh, and what are the translations? So tau a, so t of x is just equal x plus tau alpha, where alpha depends in which domain you are, uh, if x belongs to i alpha. And I need to define what is tau alpha and i alpha. So i alpha is just the interval label uh, with the letter, give a letter, a letter, and tau alpha. So let me choose just an example. What is tau b? Uh, you need to know the translation here. It's just minus lambda a plus lambda d plus lambda c. So minus lambda a plus lambda d plus lambda c. Then you can work out the other, the other case. That's b, right? Who is D? Oh, yes, thank you. The plus <coughs> B is a D. Yes, indeed. Uh, so, and this is an interval exchange transformation. And if you want a general formalism, uh, in general, uh, a good way of doing this is to consider an alphabet to label the intervals and uh, consider a mapping into 1, 2, up to D that gives you an ordering. When I wrote, wrote this line, I just can think of it as a bijection uh, from an alphabet to 1D. So this is general. I'm leaving the example. And the same for the button. And with these two bijections, it's easy to write down what all the translations. So in this case, tau alpha would just be the sum for pi bottom beta smaller than pi bottom 
alpha of lambda beta, which is just this part in the in the example, and minus the same thing with theta. So I'm writing this explicitly because it will appear uh, next. Again, of lambda beta. Uh, all right, any question on intervention transformation? These are just these simple maps of the interval that are piecewise translations. And you can see that they are almost bijections, right? Uh, except on, on these very <coughs> particular points here, uh, the map is well defined. So on these points here, I cannot really define T because I'm at the same time in A and in B. So these points, I will not consider their images. I will call them singularities, and I will not. Uh, I will consider T as a partial map, not defined on this point. So I will give name to these special points. Uh, this one is alpha top one. So I number them in increasing order. So this one is alpha top two, and this one is alpha top three. And you guess what are the names of the one in the bottom row? It's alpha one bottom. Alpha two button and alpha three button. Uh, so far, so good. And uh, so now, if you want to make a foliation out of it, uh, you just need to consider a suspension. Uh, what is a suspension? Let me make also a picture by example. Uh, C and G. So I'm, instead of considering intervals, you consider uh, vectors. And then on the bottom row, you just pick the same vectors, but in the order given by the bottom row. So D, C, V, A. And then the, this is a surface. And you just identify the sides with the same uh, vector. So this is that B. Perhaps I can put colors as well. And B was green. Okay. And the inside is the surface. And what is the foliation? The foliation is just the foliation defined by Tx. This is the picture in R2. And I can consider the one form Dx. And it defines a foliation that is just made of the vertical lines, right? So this is my foliation. So uh, the foliation is orientable. So if you like non-orientable foliation, you just take double cover, and the problem of minimality won't change. How do you choose the slopes of the, the edges? Uh, you have to choose it. It is one possible suspension. Yeah, it's not unique. But since I'm considering just dx, as a foliation, it does not matter at all what suspension I, I take. So there is no unique choice, but it does not matter for the question of topological minimality. Um, and so, what? Yeah, the dynamics here of T is just the same thing as following the leaves in this picture. If I start from the point from the point which is here, let's call me X. Uh, it's identified with the point that is here, and the point where I'm landing here. It's just t of x. If you if you put an interval here, the coordinate of this point is just t of x. So following the foliation is the same thing as applying t. So in terms of dynamic, dynamic of the foliation is the same thing as dynamic of this one map of the interval. You follow it you come back to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is you consider this top as a as a point section of the foliation, and you look at the first return map to this. Poincaré section. Uh, so now that they have a dynamic, uh, that is not defined at these special points, but it does not matter so much. So yeah, why are yeah these are singular points for the foliation? Uh, if you look at these points, that is the vertex, uh, the vertices of the polygon. Here you can check that all the vertices get identified, and if you make a picture of the vertex, so this is the image of the vertex in the surface. That's an image of vertices in S. What you will see, uh, you will see three, 
there are three uh, half lines that ends up at the singularity. So, and this is only one point in the surface. So you have three incoming things, and you have also three outgoing things. <coughs> so you have a point looking like this. And when you follow the foliation, what happens is that you are doing things like this. So these are the regular leaves in white, and the singular leaves are the the blue and brown ones. You can do the same in all the quadrants. And the thing is that when I'm in five on a singular leaf, leaf like this one, I don't know which one to choose on the left or on the right. So instead of following one of them, I just choose to not continue the, the iteration. Okay, this is what I said in the case, but this is natural from, from this point. So what is minimality now? So this, these are the foliations that I will be considering. And these are exactly the measured foliation uh, in the sense of first uh, So what is minimality? It's definition. Perhaps there is enough room for the definition. Uh, so uh, T pi lambda <coughs> is minimal if all uh, the infinite orbits. So by the infinite, I mean the ones uh, that do not enter in the future in the singularity or in the past. The infinite orbits that are regular, uh, all the infinite orbits are dense. And so this is a question I want to answer algorithmically. And what does it mean algorithmically? Pi is just a permutation, so I can input it in the computer. The lambdas are length, so you need to be careful when you deal with real numbers, what it means. Uh, but it will be here uh, in, the, in the talk. Uh, and the question is whether you can answer this question. So if you, if you do not know about foliation and minimality, only looking at this, this is a property uh, you need to know all the future of the orbits to answer this question. So it looks like it would be hard. But there is a nice theorem that tells you that if it's not minimal, it is for a very good topological reason. So it is in the theorem. Let me put it to. Uh, and yeah, the idea of Kin theorem is that if the foliation is not minimal, then there is a very good reason for it. And there are two obvious reasons why the foliation might not be minimal. So reason one, so reason, so lemma is that uh, there are only two, ob two obstructions to minimality. Two minimality. So the first one is uh, if you have a closed uh, trajectory. So closed. Uh, so uh, a periodic trajectory. Sorry. If you term in terms of foliation, it would be just a, a leaf that is a circle. So in terms of foliation, that is to say that the leaf is. Uh, the homeomorphic is homeomorphic to a second. To a second. And if you have such a thing, actually, uh, in the surface, what you will see is a bunch of periodic ones. Oops. So actually, such a, such a leaf will come in a family uh, which makes a cylinder. It never comes along. And the reason is just because you are looking at a special kind of one form. And if you have a periodic, you look at a small neighborhood of it, and you have still the same uh, periodic trajectories. Uh, and the rest of the surface, I don't know. It, it might not disconnect the surface, right? You might have a handle over here as well. Uh, so this is the first obstruction. It's clear that uh, this leaf will not be dense because it's periodic. No, it doesn't fill the surface. Okay, there's a closed leaf and on both sides the uh, sort of infinitesimal home and aspects 
points? You say like there is no way to give a single one? What do you mean? Sorry, can you repeat so the question? So you say if the there's question? a pre-alley trajectory, yes. there has to be something other fixed points close to that trajectory? Or you mean Parallel, you can per just take the biggest one? There, there, is, there is a whole bunch of periodic trajectories. And you, you can see it on, this, on the map. If you, if you have a periodic point, uh, let's say this one is periodic, of period 20. If you look a little bit on its left, you will apply, because the form of the map is just applying some translation, you will apply the same translations. So if oh, you come back to the same point, but right. this is the same other foliation, I mean just considering right. foliations coming from this. It's not any foliation. Right, yeah. These are foliations corresponding to harmonic one form, if you prefer. Right. So it's not any form. Thank you. Uh, and in this case, when such parental trajectory appears, it appears in a, in a family. So this is the first abstraction. Uh, and Kinsley lemma is from 75. Uh, and the second abstraction is a bit more trickier to deal with. Uh, you can have a union of uh, saddle connection. So union of saddle connection. I did not define it yet, I'm sorry. Connections, disconnecting the surface. So this is a bit harder to draw. Uh, and we make an example in genus 2 uh, with two singularities. Oh, uh, yeah, perhaps make it bigger here. So I will draw a foliation. So what is the saddle connection first? Uh, saddle connection is a, a leaf that joins two singularities. <coughs> so there is no definition for it, but it's easy to define. So it's a uh, leaf that joins two similarities. And if you want to think in terms of the interval exchange transformation, it means that you have a singularity in the past, so that when you apply t, you are allowed to apply t on the past singularity, but when you apply t to a certain power, you end up in a top singularity. So this is the same thing as uh, a triple uh, i, j, n, so this is in the for definition for IT, it's a triple, so that uh, Tn of alpha i bot is alpha j top. Uh, and so I'm trying to make a picture. So I will make the saddle connection in red. So you have two saddle connections in this picture. Uh, going in this direction. Uh, and these are two uh, singularities of angle 4 pi. Uh, am I right? This, yes, this is what you can have this. And you make another one on this side. Check and check. And then you complete the foliation with the irrational uh, torus on both sides. And if you want a flat picture as this one, uh, you can do that also. So, and well, let me finish the, uh, yeah, perhaps I can make a flat picture. Uh, flat picture is in two. So this would be one of the cell connection. And then you make a torus here. Oops. Uh, ah, it's harder than I thought. Uh, perhaps I won't make a flat picture. It's not very hard to do. You, as, yes, it's easy to do. You pick two tori, two flat tori, uh, foliated vertically, uh, any size you want. Grab these two. So these are tori foliated. And then you make two slits in the two of them that are vertical. So you pick a big, small slit, vertical and parallel, and then you open the slit, and you glue this side to this side, and this side to this side. And this gives you a picture like this. And this is an example of the pollution I'm considering. The union of cell connections yes. could not be, it could be a disconnected union. Right? No, no, no. If the disconnected union disconnects the surface, one connected component already disconnects, right? Uh, no, it, 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 it cannot, this cannot happen. Uh, I'm just saying sometimes yeah, yeah, right. in, in Criterion 2, yes. you, the yeah, union yeah. need not be connected. The union need not be connected. 
Yes. And somehow case one is contained in case two, but you want to consider them separately. Uh, and what is key lemma is that if neither one nor two happens, then the foliation is minimal. So this is why the criterion is strong. Uh, if neither one or two happen, then uh, oh, I have named them. The foliation is minimal. So we still have infinitely many things to check because we have to look at all trajectories and to see whether there are some periodic ones or some subtle connections in there. Uh, but it's much better. You will see why. Uh, and just as a remark, on the boundary of a cylinder, if you pick a maximal cylinder, there will also be subtle connections that disconnect the surface. Huh. So it's a bit artificial to, dis to, to distinguish between the two. But yeah, there are some refinements of the algorithm where you can uh, only care about the first case, so this is where I mentioned them. But you can think of two as containing already case one. All right. And the idea of Kim theorem. So Kim, in his article, he does not consider uh, surfaces and uh, yeah geometry, but actually the criterion is somehow very geometrical. And the idea is to look so. Uh, the singularity of the foliation, so if I so I have a, the, my surface S, I have my singularities sigma, and my subtle connections, they will define homology classes, because this is a segment from a singularity to a singularity. So subtle connections, if there is any, if any, will uh, define an element of uh, the relative homology of the surface. And the idea is to look in this space first, and then to try to discard uh, possible homology classes for the, for the subtle connection. So what should, in order to be a subtle connection, uh, you need to satisfy a very straightforward condition. So you need to look at this holonomy map somehow which consists just in integrating dx, or, or eta. So it's going into r, and if you have a curve, you can integrate it over eta. And to be in the foliation, mean that the ten, if you have a curve, meaning that you are a leaf, mean that the derivative is always uh, in the kernel of uh, dx. So if you, have a, if you are a class that comes from a cell connection, Necessarily, the holonomy will be zero. Okay. Uh, connection here with the so that all of gamma equals zero. Uh, element gamma. All right. And so this is what you should do: is consider the set of curves so that the holonomy is zero. And what is R? It's because it's called relation space. And why it is relation space? Because if you look at the interval exchange transformations uh, for IETs, this H1 S sigma Z is just the free abelian group generated by these vectors. Because this is one cell, you have only one cell, so there is no relation because you already see the relation on the boundary. So the H1 S sigma Z is just equal to, <coughs> to the power A with a canonical basis made of the zetas that I wrote on the, side, side, uh, on the picture there. So which is isomorphic to Z to the T for some D, which is a cardinality of A. Uh, and what is the integral of eta? Uh, and Holonomy is just looking actually at the relations between the entries of lambdas. So what is lambda? Uh, lambda is the length of this guy, but the length is just the integral of dx on this curve. So the, this map here is just taking uh, a vector in Zd, 
and you map it to the sum lambda one, uh, a1 lambda 1 plus a2 lambda 2, etc. And the kernel is just the set of linear relations between the entries. So this is why it is called R, because it's the linear relations. And so the first criterion for minimality, so Keynes criterion, or, uh, so let's say corollary, this already appears in Keynes' paper. Uh, ah, I will state two things. Oh, one is not a corollary, so let me call it proposition. Uh, one part of it. So one easy thing is that if you have a lot, no, if you have no relation first, so if R is equal to zero, uh, so, you, so that you have no relation, so soon enough I will call it the rank. I will consider the rank, uh, which is the dimension of the space, but it's, as it is a Z, Z module, it's better to call it rank, I guess. Uh, so if you have no relations, it means that you have no candidate for being a saddle connection. If you have a saddle connection, it will define a non-zero element in the homology. So if you have no potential candidate, then necessarily you are minimal because you have no saddle connection at all. So this implies that uh, minimal. So you're, we already have a criterion for minimality. You just pick entries that are irrationally related, and you get minimality for free. And the other case that is interesting is when R is uh, isomorphic to Z, D minus 1. So I assume that lambda is not 0, otherwise it's a bit trivial. But if uh, it's Z, D minus 1, it means that the lambda belongs to uh, something times U to the D. So it's uh, basically you can consider that uh, it's a rational point. And if it's rational, all the orbits are periodic. This is also easy to see. Uh, so, complete <laughs> period. Uh, yeah, I don't have a lot of time, so I will just. So, I, I already sketched the proof of the first case using the lemma. And for the second case, you just uh, see if you have a lambda that belongs here, you can consider that it belongs to QD. And if it belongs to QD, you can cancel the denominator by multiplying by something. And then all the integer points are preserved. And then you have by permutation on them, and everything needs to be priority from there. So this is also easy to. Can you read the. I'm sorry, so it's, if R is trivial. If R is trivial, necessarily the foliation is minimal. What's the thing in between? The rank of R is equal to zero. Rank, 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 rank. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And in this case, the rank of R is maximal. Is rank of R being D minus one? Okay. And so we only need to care about the cases in between, right? This is why this came up. The intermediate rank. So uh, we let me skip this uh, and erase on the. So a problem which can occur is, for example, if all the lambdas over here would belong to Q square root of two, I join square root of two. In this case, you would have rank two. And yeah, there is no way this would be enough to answer. So the idea to go further uh, is to introduce some cones. So this is an idea of uh, of uh, Bosch-Arnitzen. I don't remember the dates, but it was in the 90s. And the paper is called uh, on rank 2 interval exchange transformations. And rank 2, he means rank in this sense. So rank 1 is the case where it's completely degenerated. Uh, oh, sorry, the rank is the opposite. Oh, I did a big, a big mess. So let me remove the rank that is here, sorry. So the paper is called rank 2, but rank 2 means that uh, the relation space is actually d minus 2. So you have two degrees of freedom. And in order to treat this case, uh, he introduced some cone 
And he, from this code, he made an algorithm and he proved that the algorithm actually terminates. Uh, it's not hard to show, and this is what I want to do here, that you can extend the algorithm for any kind of entries, but the problem is that the algorithm might run forever. So it's not an algorithm. And so this is why the question from the title is asked. Uh, and actually the same ID uh, reappeared recently, so let me mention this, in a paper of uh, Dinikov and Sasha Skripchenko. Skripchenko. This is a more recent one. And they are actually studying the stability of minimality when you move the lambda. So you fix pi and you move lambda and you're wondering whether you have some kind of stability of non-minimality or minimality. Uh, but let me not talk about this. Um, so we still want to do the same thing. We want to discard points in H1 from being potential cell connection. And the idea is that we will replace this with a cone inside that is much smaller, so that uh, possibly we can avoid having uh, integer point inside. So if you want to have a picture, uh, you can imagine that you have your set of bad R's over here, with integer points inside. And the idea is that you want to build a cone, so that you will, this cone is made so that all cell connections will be contained in the cone, and so that if it, so this is my R, so if it does not intersect R, I will be safe, and this gives me a criterion. Even if R is not empty, I have some chance that the cone, for the cone to be outside of R. And this is the cone. So what is this cone? This cone is still on the board. This cone is actually generated by these guys. So, C, T, lambda is uh, the cone in homology, S, sigma, zeta. Uh, gener so, a cone is generated by rays, and I will just give you the rays generated uh, by, and the rays correspond exactly to the class uh, that corresponds to the tau alpha. So, let me call it theta alpha, which is the sum of the E uh, beta minus the sum of the E beta, and you pick the same, so it's minus for the bottom. And the same with stop. Did you transfer the beta? Beta is a letter. Because E is the canonical basis of the D. It's the canonical basis that I wrote here, sorry, it's an E. Ah. But, but sin has a homology class, so E of A is the homology class of zeta A. <laughs> zeta A is con considered as a curve, E A is just uh, its homology class. And by construction, the holonomy of this guy, of course, is uh, my translation tau alpha. And now we have a cone, and I claim that I can look inside it to find saddle connections. So it's not exactly true. So what, what is a saddle connection? Yeah. All right. A saddle connection is something that starts from blue. So blue, you, you think of it as a germ from here. So you start from a blue. And then uh, you start crossing the A and perhaps some other, and then you end up so you and then you end up in some other singularity. So if you have some subtle connection, what its homology class look like? First, you start. So in my example here, E it's alpha. So sorry, it's E one bottom. So what is E1 bottom is just the homology class corresponding to this guy. So it's D here. So you start from uh, 
sorry, it's not clear. I want to consider the holonomy of the of my saddle connection. So I'm starting seeing, thinking of it as a real parameter on this uh, interval. I'm starting from alpha one bottom, and then when I jump from here to here, I know that I'm applying some tau, right? Because it's just the definition of the map. So here I'm just doing plus tau a. Moving here to here. Here I'm hitting the side C, so I'm just applying uh, tau C. And at the end, it's a solid connection. So I know that I end up in some alpha top. And in this case, it's alpha 1, it's alpha 2 top. But this is general. Anytime you have a solid connection, you start from alpha I top, uh, alpha I bot, sorry. You apply a bunch of translations, and you end up in a top singularity. So, uh, solid connection. Uh, R to be searched for in. So, they are not to be searched for exactly in the cone, but in, trans in, in the translates of the cone by this uh, alpha bottom minus alpha top. So, in the E, I, Bot minus J top plus C phi lambda. And EI bot EJ top are just the homology class corresponding to the. so that the autonomy of these points uh, on top. If it's not clear, I can look it more precisely. Uh, and then from there, you have the more general criterion than this one. Let's say theorem, so it's a minimality criterion. And then I will tell you why it's actually better than the one that is here. So the criterion is that uh, if for all i, j from 1 to d minus 1, we have no intersection between what you are actually inform. So you can rotate the other way. So you, you fix your code and you actually intersect it with the relation space. Uh, but you need to invert the sign. E j top minus E i but if this is empty for all i j then uh, minimal. So you might say that what do we actually win by stating this criterion? It's just some more complicated thing than here. But the thing is that if you start applying uh, shortening of the train track or applying Rossi induction here, this criterion actually gives you something better because the cone gets shorter and shorter. So in this case, if you apply Rossi induction, you won't change the, the rank. The R will not change at all. But if you actually shorten the things, this becomes smaller and smaller, and you have more chance to actually avoid R. So this is why this is interesting. Uh, this criterion is interesting. Interesting because applying uh, yeah, let's say rows induction. You get sequence of cone uh, C I N lambda N. So uh, that are actually nested to cones, and they actually converge to some, let's say, C infinity. And actually, this C infinity of pi lambda is just the set of measures, uh, invariant measures uh, for the for the interval exchange transformation. But whatever it is, there is a limit cone, and for the so now you can build an algorithm that is just you start from your pi lambda, and you just check this criterion, and if it does not work, you pick the next 
uh, interval exchange for the Rossi induction. But for the one who does not know what is Rossi induction, you just start making the truncated section smaller. So instead of looking at ABCD here, you cut here, and you look at the shorter Poincaré section. And making this procedure makes the cone smaller and smaller. And this is an algorithm, because you have this that shrinks, so there is more chance to avoid this. Uh, and this algorithm, so you check this along the orbit of the Rossi induction. And the only way you can get into trouble is if this is containing any of these guys here. And this does happen, and this is exactly the evil sub-zero uh, that I was talking about before. So, uh, algorithm. So, which is not an algorithm, so non-algorithm. Uh, so, uh, check for the criterion along Rossi induction. And either uh, you arrive at a point so that the you find a connection of length zero. Uh, that is, there are two points. There is a cell connection that does not involve any tau, actually. So you have to find a cell connection, and you check whether it disconnects or not the circuits. Uh, and two cases. Uh, if it stops, uh, and, and stop, stop in both cases, uh, if criterion is satisfied, and then you have minimality. Uh, return minimality. And there is another case where you can stop, is that if there is a cell connection of length zero, cell connection of combinatorial length zero, I should say, uh, alpha i dot equal alpha j dot. And in this case, uh, you, in this case it's a bit trickier because you might have a cell connection that does not disconnect the surface, so you have to sort of simplify that you can get rid of it, so get rid of it, or say non-minimal if it actually disconnects. But this is a partial algorithm, so I, I will not say more about this. But so, you can, yeah. so, so should I be thinking here that these lengths are specified as like algebraic numbers or something? Ah, yeah. Yeah. I, I thought about this at the beginning, well. but yeah, yeah, you need, uh, yeah, you, you're very right, that is an issue. What is a number? <laughs> uh, yeah, you need to be able to compute the relation space in order to apply the criterion. So, uh, so in order to make it, uh, so there is two ways of doing it. Either you are a theoretical mathematician and you say you are using Bloom Schumpf's male machines that can compare real numbers and then you are done. Uh, but if you want to actually make computation, we need to consider so numbers. Uh, are to be taken, so they, they need not be in a fixed number field. Uh, numbers are to be taken in a, what I would call a computable field. <coughs> Subfield of R, which means that is a subfield where I can check for uh, equality and inequality. Well, you do have an algorithm for inequality and equality. And linear dependencies also, with algo for uh, equality, uh, inequalities, and uh, linear dependencies. So like Q adjoining square root of 2 and pi or something, is that the kind of thing? Yes, this is the kind of thing you can deal with. So Q square root of 2 pi is fine, but be careful, Q pi e is not fine. We do not know whether there are not yet. If you believe it, you can use it. But. Okay. Uh, so this is a partial algorithm, and it does not work uh, when. So find when uh, c infinity 
intersected with this uh, blah 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 uh, equal empty. And what proves what proved uh, nitsen is that in the case you have two degrees of freedom, this algorithm always terminates. And the problem is that when you have three degrees of freedom, you have some example that does not work. And this is one of them. This is an example. Uh, if I pick a point in there, anyone, it determines a certain interval exchange with seven intervals, where I have uh, four uh, dimensional space of relations. And C infinity contains uh, the, some, the, the space of is actually this R is contained in C infinity in this case. So you have many, many uh, integer points in the cone, and I will not uh, avoid them in the list. Um, so let me turn this on. I want you to show some pictures. And then stop. Uh, there is something to. So uh, yeah, it's just for people who already knows the, this picture. This picture comes from uh, or uh, foliations on RP2 that you that you lift in order to make it an orientable foliation. So this picture comes from a very particular. Um, Situation with non orientable surfaces, and we did some experiments with Barack Weiss, where we found other nice examples, but with no geometric underground, where you have the same kind of uh, fractal stuff coming in, but which come from a reason that we do not understand. We know that we have a fractal, but we do not know why. Uh, do we see something? Yep. Cool. Uh, yes. Here is the fractal. You oh, let me do that. Here is the fractal. So uh, what you see is some light green, some dark green, and some red. And the point is that this is a two-dimensional space of parameter lambda. Uh, which is m m most likely this kind of picture, uh, but it's, it's in, 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 in an ambient space of smaller dimension than in this case. And the red uh, part, in the middle of each red spot, there's a lot of red spot, there is a pseudo anosov. So in the middle of the red, there is always a, a minimal point. And in the green parts, I know that everything is completely biotic. So these are the degenerate regions somehow. And in the middle there, you have many, many minimal points. And this is somehow the same picture. In this picture, all these regions are completely biotic. And uh, in the Cantor set corresponding to the intersection of the complements, these correspond to minimal foliations. Uh, and so this is one of the strange pictures uh, we get with, uh, with Barak Weiss, not knowing where they came from. Uh, and basically, yeah, this is the kind of question you need to answer in order to go further with this possible algorithm. Thank you. Are there any questions? Um, so, by contrast, are there strange pictures where you know where they come from? Uh, but this is a picture where I know where they come from. Uh, so that, that yeah. uh -huh. So there, I mean, there's a, a sort of a geometric understanding yeah, yeah, yeah. behind yeah. that one. And what I mean by strange example, it's a it's a slice of parameter in the lambdas, so that everybody in there has sub zero, and so that you have uh, a lot of minimal elements. It's not easy if you pick a random slice which has sub zero. Most of the time, you would not expect to have any minimal elements. So this is one example which appears because we started from the pseudonymous checking whether it's sub-zero, and then embed it in the in canonical slice of sub-zero stuff. And then we found another pseudonymous in the same slice, which is sort of strange. And then you can start composing them and composing them and get plenty of them. So what represents the pseudonymous? What represents the stable animation? Oh, you pick a point in the middle. Point in the middle gives you a lambda. Yeah. And the lambda, you put it on the right 
a permutation mm -hmm. and it gives you an interval exchange transformation and this gives you the stable lamination. And if you want the other lamination, you have to invert the process. But it's also doable. Wait, so can you point it uh, all the one in the middle of the red regions. In the middle of the red regions. Yeah. So, so in this example, the algebraic nature of the situation comes up naturally. Yeah. The pseudo -nosso. So it's a very. Yeah. It's you're a, not imposing this as a tool of computation. It's a natural condition for the problem. So can we repeat that? Yeah. The, you're not. In, you in your talk you mentioned imposing a condition on your parameters so that you could compute them. Yes, yes, yes. yes and yes. you mentioned the possibility of algebraic. Sure, sure. This but algebraic. in this problem, this it, seems, it seems it's a natural condition. Yeah. Is that, is that, am I correct? In that? Yeah, yeah, this one is a, yeah, this plane is determined by algebraic conditions. Uh, yeah, it's a, uh, but not any point in there. What, what should I say? Uh, this space is a, already a, per, the space of parameters for the lambda. It's a two-parameter family of lambdas, and you have five, uh, seven lambdas, I think, related with only two parameters. And uh, but you have points in there for which the entries you cannot compute with them. But in the middles of the red, the algebraic ones are one that you can deal with. And the problem is to make the difference between a point that is in the middle of the red and the one which is just near to it, that will be not minimal but looks like very much like a minimal part. So the question is about, yeah, answering this question would give you a, pre a, pri uh, a priori condition to exclude uh, non-minimality. So, yeah, it's clear the connection with that. Yeah, we need some algebraic conditions to go further on the self-zero case. And this might not even be enough. It's not clear at this point. We need to understand all these kind of features coming from sub-zero slices. Do we have any other questions? Yeah. Or if not, let's thank Mason again for writing. Yeah.